Hello, Irish Algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here with a flip lesson, and this one is only for the people who had trouble on the quiz. If you did really well with the quiz and you totally get this and don't need to watch it, then don't watch it. But if you didn't totally get it and you're a little fuzzy on stuff, hopefully this one will help you out. Look, I care about you guys. I want you to do your best, but I also want to help you to do your best. So I decided to make this extra little video for you. Sorry I didn't tell you, but the thought came to me after you guys were already out of school. All right. Uh, first of all, here we have four lines graph, and we have to come up with their equations. Remember that we like to write our equations usually in the form of y equals mx plus b, which we call slope-intercept form. And remember that b is the y-intercept, and m is the slope. Okay, now, look at this black line here on the graph on the left. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my slope. So I can count uh, either from this point to this one, point A to point B, or I can count from point B to point A. Either case, it doesn't matter. If I count from A to B, I'm going to count down, which means I'm going to get a negative number for my rise. And if I count to the right, I'm going to get a positive number for my run. Okay, if I should decide to count from B to A, well, then my rise is going to be positive. Positive rise. And a negative run. You need to pay attention to this detail. I've got a couple people being really stubborn about this and just saying, no, I just count. Well, you can't just count. You have to pay attention to direction. Uh, remember, your way is only good if it produces the right answer. If your way isn't working, then you need to give up being so stubborn and try a different way. If you don't like my way, that's fine. But whatever way you come up with has to be working. So, I'm going to move this stuff out of my way, and I'm going to count from A to B, which means I'll count down 1, 2, 3, 4. My rise number is a negative 4. My run number is a positive 1. I can keep that as negative 4 over 1, or I can call it negative 4. So I know for my black equation, the, the slope number is negative 4. All right, I look for my y-intercept. And I think I'm finding it right about there. Now, one, two, three, four, one. Actually, if I check with my slope, it looks like it's off a little bit, but it's not. It's actually on a point. How do I know? Watch, I'm going to count from A to B. One, two, three, four, one, right one. One, two, three, four, right one. I hit this point exactly on the nose. So I know that my y-intercept is right there. Okay. Uh, so we need to know what number that is. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's down six on the y-axis. That must mean my y-intercept B is negative six. Therefore, my equation of the black line is y equals negative four x minus 6. All right, the red line. I'm going to go looking for my slope. I've got two points here. I already know my slope's going to be positive. I'm not sure if you know that. I'm going to rise up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I'm going to run over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my slope is going to be a rise of 4 or run of 6, but I don't like this number. It's not simplified, so I am going to reduce it. Simplify it. All right, so I know my slope is there. Now I need a y-intercept. Now this one's not so pretty. This one I am not actually so sure about. So I'm going to estimate approximately where it is. So I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, well, that would be 5. I'm going to say it's about 5 and 3 quarters. So B is going to equal about 5 and 3 quarters. 
Now on a test, I won't give you one where you have to guess. You'll know your y-intercept. It'll be obvious. Okay, n is going to equal two-thirds, but I do think it's important for you to understand where I'm getting these numbers from. I know somebody in class first period asked about that, and it seemed kind of magical to them. Like, wait a minute, how did they do that? Once I explained, they were like, oh, of course, that makes sense. But I need you guys to be able to do that at any time. All right. I'm not going to spend quite as much time on the next two problems. I don't want this to be a super long video. But I'm going to say that I've got a vertical line, the black one, and a horizontal line, the red one. And they're both going through the point negative 4 or 5. Well, let's do the red one first. It's probably easier. Let me get a second point on here. I'll choose the y-intercept on purpose. So my y-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Uh, my rise, I'm going to go from black point to red point. I rise 0. And I run 1, 2, 3, 4. So my slope is 0 fourths, which is better said as 0. Okay. My equation for the red line ends up being y equals 0x plus 5, but that's not simple enough. We always want to give this most simple answer. 0 times x is 0, 0 plus 5 is 5, and there you go. Alright, one thing you'll notice, this point here is the point 0, 5. This point over here is the point 0, oh, excuse me, 10, 5. The point over here is negative 10, 5. Do you notice every single point has the same y-coordinate? y is 5 on every single point. y is 5. y equals 5. All right. The black equation. So I get another point. I can't get a y-intercept because this line is parallel to the y-axis. Because I can't get a y-intercept, that also means that I can't write the equation in slope y-intercept form, because there's no slope. All right. I do know that that point is negative 4, 5, and this point is negative 4, 3. Hey, look at that. This point is negative 4, 0. And this point is negative 4, negative 3. Well. All four of those points have a negative 4. Where do they have the negative 4? Why they have it for x. So in this case, x equals negative 4. All right. Remember, the black line has no slope, and the red line in that one has 0 slope. OK, given two points, we want to find the equation of y that goes through them without graphing. We're going to use y equals mx plus b. First thing we're going to do is find our slope. I'm going to subtract my y's, and then I'm going to subtract my x's. And notice how I am consistent. If I start with 9 in my numerator, I have to start with the 3 in the denominator. 9 minus 8 is 1. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. And I don't like that answer. I won't mark it wrong on a test, but it's unusual to see that negative in the denominator. There's my slope. Now, sometimes kids have trouble with this part. I'm going to use this equation to help me find out b. I need an x, I need a y, and I need a slope. Well, I have my slope. So for my slope, I'm going to put in negative one third. Now, x and y, I can get from these points. And I think because there's a 3 here, I'm going to use the point 3, 9. Put a 3 in for x, a 9 in for y, and now I'm going to solve for b. So 9 is going to equal to negative 1 plus b. I've got to get b alone. By the way, I want to get b alone, right? What's keeping the b from being alone? The negative 1. It would be silly of me to subtract 9 from both sides. But I don't want the 9 to come over and join the b. I want the negative 1 to leave, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So 
So 10 is going to equal B. All right, now I have my equation. Uh, y equals negative 1 third x plus 10. All right, there we go. This is turning into a long video. I think I only have two more examples. All right, I've got two equations here that I'm going to graph. Um, there's a problem, though, because right now, neither equation is in slope or intercept form. So, I've got to get the y alone. Can't seem to move that. There we go. So in both of these equations, I'm going to get y alone. This one here, I want to get the y alone. And then this one here, I want to get y alone. So I'm going to subtract 6x on the black one. And that's going to result in the equation 5y equals negative 6x plus 10. Because I'm going for slope y-intercept form, I'd like to add my x term first. The 6 is negative. So the 6 has to be negative down here. The 10 is positive. The 10 has to be positive. All right. And then I divide by 5 in all three places. All right. Y is going to equal negative 6 fifths x plus 2. This equation is ready to graph. Do you know your y-intercept? You should. Do you know your slope? You should. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put a point at 2. Right there. And then I'm going to count down 6 and write 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can do it again just to make a prettier line or you know, get it more accurate. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I wanted a fourth point just for accuracy from the y-intercept, I could count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then back. Oh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I was about to use the wrong slope. Stop and think for a minute. How could I have known I was using the wrong slope if I didn't catch my mistake? Hopefully you're thinking that the points wouldn't have, the, the last point, the fourth one, would not have been on a line with the other three. And if you were thinking that, you have a thoroughly awesome understanding of this. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the red equation. And I'm going to subtract three from both sides. 3x, excuse me. And when I do that, I'm going to get negative y equals negative 3x plus 2. Well then, I have a negative here. I don't want a negative there. It's kind of like having a negative 1. So I'm going to divide all three terms by negative 1, which will yield the equation y equals 3x minus 2. Come up to my graph. I need a y-intercept of negative 2, and then my slope is 3. 1, arise. 1, 2, 3, run, 1. Arise. 1, 2, 3, run, 1. I'm ready to draw my line. 1, 2, 3, back 1. Oh, and there we go. And that's it. All right, I hope this helps you become more successful in the first part of Chapter 5. Mr. Lawrence, signing off.